Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to set aside the pending amendment. Is there objection? Without objection. Mr. President, I call up amendment number 423. Clerk will report. Mr. President, I ask The again. Senator from Texas, Mrs. Hutchison, for herself and others, proposes an amendment numbered 423. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading of the amendment. Without objection. Uh, Mr. President, uh, this is an amendment that I hope will save our businesses and our states the millions of dollars that they are now spending to implement the health care reform bill that is in the courts. Uh, today, uh, or actually it was yesterday, uh, the court in Atlanta, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta, heard arguments from the government and the states about whether the Florida District Court ruling that the health care law is null and void because it is unconstitutional should be upheld. Um, since we are in this court fight, and this will surely go to the Supreme Court, there is no doubt that either side that loses is going to appeal, uh, my amendment would, keep, would put a moratorium on the implementation of the law. So it would save the federal government and the taxpayers who are paying for it. It would save the state's governments that are trying to implement a law that may be unconstitutional and costing millions of dollars to adjust their systems. And the businesses across our country that are trying desperately to determine if they're going to be able to even offer health insurance or if they want to offer health insurance to their employees anymore. Uh, Mr. President, we're at a time when there is unprecedented regulatory burden on our businesses. Uh, we are facing a $14 trillion deficit in this country. Trillion. We are looking at having to raise that debt limit if we don't severely cut spending and get our house in order. So. In the past two years alone, this federal government has borrowed an additional $3.2 trillion. Washington passed a health care reform bill that costs nearly $2.6 trillion and a stimulus bill that costs $789 billion, and now we have higher unemployment since the stimulus bill passed. The U.S. economy is frozen. Job creators are facing new levels of taxes. Now they're looking at this health insurance cost going up and on top of that, new regulations. Heavy-handed government regulation is not what we need right now. The health care reform bill is a perfect example of government regulations hamstringing our businesses with more red tape and bureaucracy. Over a year since that bill was passed, businesses are still facing unprecedented premium increases, as high as 20 percent. Employers are finding their policies being canceled because insurers are closing up shop due to new federal regulations. Health care reform is requiring individuals and businesses to buy government-approved health care, or they pay hefty fines. Health reform has discouraged businesses from hiring because if you go over 50 employees, the new federal regulations are going to be costly or, again, you're going to be fined if you don't decide to opt in. A new study out this week confirms that health reform will not let you keep your health plan as promised. This report found that when businesses fully understand all the new regulations required under health reform, as many as half of them say they will definitely or probably stop offering health insurance benefits to their employees. That would leave as many as 78 million Americans on their own to find health insurance for themselves and their families. That is why I have filed Amendment Number 423 to delay further implementation of health reform until the courts determine whether it is constitutional. My amendment would pause further implementation of this law so that we don't spend millions more of taxpayer dollars at the federal level, at the state level, and costing small businesses as well when it could be struck down. Twenty-six states have sued the federal government. 
and a Florida district court found in favor of these 26 states, saying the federal government, the Congress, had overstepped and overreached its authority. So that mandating the individuals to purchase health insurance was unconstitutional. The uh, 11th Circuit Court, as I said earlier, is hearing the, this case as we speak, and we should not burden any further the businesses and the states and the taxpayers that support the federal government uh, until we know if this law really is constitutional. Let's just put a moratorium, a pause, so that no one is going to get penalized for not continuing the implementation process, clarify, and then if it's constitutional, it, there's plenty of time to go forward, but if it isn't, as I hope is the case, uh, we will be able to start all over to make more affordable health care available in this country without cutting Medicare, overburdening our taxpayers and businesses, and maybe we would get our economy going and uh, stop this rising unemployment that we are seeing in our country right now. Nine percent unemployment is too high, and health care reform is a part of the problem that is causing it. Thank you, Mr. President, and I yield the floor.